Hello everybody, Anton Crilly here from dropshiplifestyle.com. And in this video, I'm gonna answer the question of is dropshipping still worth it? Now, if you just want the answer, it is of course yes, but, and this is a big but, if you do it a certain way. In my opinion, there is one way to dropship profitably, and it has been that way for quite some time now. So it doesn't just mean that, yes, of course, dropshipping is still worth it. It means if you do it the right way, it definitely is. So I don't wanna just leave you with that. So what I did is just put together some of the most common hesitations, I would say, that we hear from people at my company, Dropship Lifestyle, that are thinking about getting into this business, but not sure if it is still worth it. So we're gonna go ahead and break them down one by one. And if by the end of this video, you have a concern that hasn't been addressed, feel free to post it as a comment below or email it in to Anton at dropshiplifestyle.com. And maybe we could do a round two of this or we could just respond with the answer to your question. First thing that I hear all the time is Anton, dropshipping is not new. And guess what? That's very true. But isn't there too much competition? Now, I'm going to answer this, but the first thing I'm going to say here is dropshipping, not only is it not new, it is something that has been around since before the internet. If you think back to things like mail order catalogs, which I actually still do get, I don't really know why, they just go straight in the recycling bin, but these are things that people used to send out, people would buy from them, and then the products would be dropshipped straight from the company that actually makes them and warehouses them. So no, dropshipping is not new. But does that mean that now, as we go into the new year, there is too much competition and things are too saturated? No, absolutely not. But again, this comes back to how we build stores and our specific model of dropshipping. Now, I'm not even going to get into the high ticket stuff here. That could be a conversation for another day. But the way that we build stores is to be niche specific. So instead of just building a general store, trying to sell a little of everything, or instead of building a one product store and just trying to find one hot trendy thing, we build stores around niches. So for example, surfboards. If we wanted to build a surfboard store, we would find all of the legitimate brands that make surfboards that are dropship friendly, and we would sell their products on our store. Now, what does that mean when it comes to competition? Because maybe you'll just say to that, well, aren't surfboards too competitive of a niche? Well, maybe, but the way that I would find out is not just by saying dropshipping is too competitive. I would find that out by doing research. What is that research? Well, the first thing that I would do is go to google.com. I would search for surfboard. I would click on the shopping tab and I would look at all of the free Google product listings there and I would see how many stores were listing the most popular ones there, the most popular surfboards in this example. And what I would wanna see is the first results page of Google Shopping to have all of the top products you see there being listed by 10 or less stores, okay? So competition for us with the dropship lifestyle model occurs at the product level. I would never say any niche is too saturated, whatever that niche may be. Instead, I would look at the most popular niche products according to Google in Google Shopping, again, in the free Google product listing section, and I would see how many stores are listing them because that is where competition matters. If there are too many stores listing, again, over 10 stores listing the most popular products in that niche, then yes, I would say that there is too much competition there, but not because surfboards as a whole is saturated saturated or not because there's too much competition in drop shipping, but because there were too many stores listing the most popular, in this case, surfboards. Now let's say that was the case. What do we do? We move on to another niche. Maybe we go to stand up paddle boards, do our competition test there. And again, at the product level, if that does not have too much competition, then we will gladly proceed with any niche that people might say is too saturated or has too much competition. And at the very least, when somebody says to me, drop shipping is too saturated or there's too much competition, I write that off immediately because in no way is a business model of e-commerce for a specific niche of products too saturated. That is, in my opinion, a ridiculous statement. Moving on to the second thing I hear a lot is what about ad costs, right? Ads are expensive. They're a lot more than they used to be when you first got started. This is people talking to me knowing I got started in 2008. And while that is true, there are also much better ad types to run now. And we also have much better control of who our ads show to and how to track the results to see which ads actually work. 
Again, I started with this model back in 2008, and back then, I barely knew which ads were driving sales. So even though ads technically cost less per click, I was putting a lot of money into ads kind of blindly and looking at my overall return on ad spend to see, does this work, does it not? And I really couldn't fine tune my ads because back then, tracking wasn't as good, and also the ad inventory available to us was not as good. So while yes, there is competition in terms of ads, of course, it doesn't mean that ads can't be profitable. For us, at a minimum, we want to see a 10x return on ad spend, that is ROAS, and what that means is for every dollar that we put into ads, we want to see at least $10 back in revenue. And I'll just say here that for us, this is much easier than for people that do low ticket drop shipping, because again, we do sell expensive products, so that would mean, in this example, to get a sale for $1,000, we'd be willing to spend up to $100 in ad cost to get that sale. As long as those numbers work out, we'll do that all day long, and it is well worth the investment of ad money to get those sales. Now, maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, okay, that makes sense, but I don't have a bunch of money to put into ads. I don't wanna have to spend thousands of dollars to start getting sales. Well, guess what? You don't need to. Again, something that's not talked about that often is that while I am a huge fan of paid ads, there are also many ways to get free traffic to your e-commerce store in 2024. One of them being the thing I just mentioned, which is those free Google product listings, where you can literally get the best type of traffic for $0 in ad costs. These are people that are gonna be searching for your product names. They're going to be seeing your product image, the product price, your store name. And when they click that, guess what? That is a very quality qualified click that costs you zero dollars. Also, Google gives up to $500 in free ad money, so it's not like you need to have this big bankroll to put out there and hope that your ads work. No, we start very small, typically between $10 and $30 a day in ad cost, and because of the type of stores that we run and the type of keywords that show our ads, we'll know if those ads are going to be profitable within about two to three days, and from there, we can optimize. This is not playing a long game where we're putting a bunch of money into ads and hoping things work out in three weeks, in three months in three years. No, we're going to know very quick what is working and what's not because of how good tracking now is and we can make informed decisions based on that data. Now, the next thing that I want to address in this video is what about the reputation of dropshipping? Because it is no secret that if you go online and you start looking up dropshipping, you'll probably see posts from a bunch of people saying, oh, dropshipping is a scam. It's a bunch of people selling products that they buy on AliExpress or Alibaba for $3, list online for $50 and run Facebook ads too, right? And while yes, that is technically dropshipping, I just want you to know in case for some reason you're not aware of this yet, that is not something Something I recommend, even though, you know, it's technically nothing wrong with it, but that is not something that I recommend. It is not something we do. And we go as far, and we have for probably the past decade, that when we're reaching out to brands to sell for, we're not just saying, hey, can we drop ship your products? We're actually reaching out to legitimate brands in the niches that we want to be in, and we are asking if we can become internet retailers to sell their products. So let me just break this down for you a little bit. And of course, you might be thinking, well, Anton, you know, this channel is called dropship lifestyle, your website is called dropship lifestyle. What are you talking about? Like you don't even use the word dropshipping. Well, the reason this is called dropship lifestyle is so people can find us that actually want to break into this business. Because of course, what we do is actually dropshipping, but we are non-stocking internet retailers. And again, what does that mean? It means drop shipping, but it helps in a couple ways. One is with our approach to suppliers. They're not just thinking that we're trying to run this business model and trying to figure stuff out as we go and you know hopefully make a quick buck here or there. No, we're building legitimate businesses that are selling for brands that actually need companies like ours to make money. Because another hesitation that I'll just add into this section here is from people that think, well, why don't these brands just sell directly to the public? It's because that's not their business. There are many, there are thousands, tens of thousands of brands out there whose goal, whose focus, whose purpose of existence is to make quality products in whatever niche they're in, whether that be stand-up desks, whether that be surfboards, whether that be rugs, whether that be, you know, whatever it is, anything. They don't want to be an e-commerce company. They don't want to be a direct-to-consumer company. Their business literally is to make great products, and the way they make money is by having retailers like us sell 
those products for them. So how do we make money? Again, it's not by finding these price discrepancies here or there and trying to sell someone else's product and just somehow, you know, get a quick buck. Again, what we're doing is becoming authorized retailers. We're getting wholesale pricing from the brands we sell for of maybe, uh, let's just do an example where a wholesale price might be $500. So I'll do W for that. Then they'll give us our map price, which is what we would sell for, which is typically at least 2X wholesale. So we would sell it for $1,000. I'm just gonna put map here, minimum advertised price. And that is how we make money. Again, there's nothing shady about this. There's no bad reputation for I don't know, take Target, for example, buying brooms from whatever broom company exists out there, putting them on their shelves and doubling the price. That's literally the business. That is our business as well. Next thing I wanna discuss is sustainability. And this is a big one that I hear from people because what you know, what if I build this store and again, in a couple of years, this doesn't work anymore. Is this actually sustainable? And in my opinion, right now, the answer is yes. Again, I've been doing this stuff myself now for almost 15 years, that is crazy to think about. And people have been asking this question since I first got started. In fact, I've been asking it myself because once I started making more money than I could ever imagine at an actual job, I thought, is this real? Is this going to last? And it's lasted this long. And in my opinion, it is not going to stop anytime soon. The one concern would be, what if there is one giant out there, one juggernaut e-commerce company that basically takes everybody out? And you might be thinking, well, that would be Amazon. That's the elephant in the room, right? And I'll say the beauty of the types of products we sell in the higher price ranges that are not from big mainstream brands, at this point, Amazon is not dominating that market by any stretch. In fact, most of the brands that we sell for are not even on Amazon. I think part of the reason is the price point. Part of the reason is also shipping costs, which to Amazon, they like to offer free shipping on everything. And it just doesn't really fit into what they're currently doing. Now, will there be a point five years down the line or 10 years down the line where Amazon literally owns all of e-commerce? Maybe, but even if that happens, wouldn't you rather have this stretch where you're making more money than you could from a nine to five? And then five to 10 years from now, if that does happen, you can look back and think, I'm so happy I took advantage of that rather than I can't believe I missed out on that. And I'm telling you at this point, you are nowhere near missing out on it. And just one more thing I'll say on the Amazon front is the amount of revenue we do, even though it is multi, multi, multi seven figures per store, it is nowhere near what Amazon does. It is the tiniest fraction of a percent of Amazon. And to them, it would be almost nothing, but to us, it is life-changing. So just keep that in mind as well. I'm not saying we're gonna go out there and take out Amazon. I'm saying there is plenty of market share available for you to build a business that can be life-changing for many years to come. For us, again, some stores going on well over 10 years now, some stores that I plan to pass down to my children. And again, at this point, I do not see that stopping, but even if it did, I'd personally rather look back and say, I'm so happy I took advantage of that rather than I can't believe I missed out on it. And hopefully you feel the same way. Last point I want to address in this video is why are you teaching this stuff, right? And this is kind of coming at me. And the question is, you know, Anton, if you're doing so well with this, why would you be sharing this information? And not only that, but why if I go on YouTube, do I see, it seems like 100, 15 and 20 year old kids teaching this stuff. The first thing I'll say is about everybody else, I can't speak for them, I don't know them. I'll tell you most of what I see out there is talking about drop shipping from China, which again, in my opinion, was never a good business model. I don't think it ever will be. Again, the goal, what we do is to work with US suppliers, because I'm in the US, to list their products as authorized retailers on our store, to become great at driving traffic, to become great at customer service, to give customers an amazing experience, and to build businesses that stick around for decades. But I'll tell you the reason for me personally that I do share this is because way back, again, in 2008, when I first got into high ticket drop shipping, as I scaled up over the first few years and built more and more stores, I realized I had a decision to make. I could go the routes of Wayfair.com. You're probably familiar with them. They're a multi-billion dollar drop shipping store. Back then, they were CSN stores and they built hundreds of niche stores similar to the ones we build. And I thought, okay, I can go that route. And what would I need to do? Do what they did. Basically open a massive office with hundreds upon hundreds of employees. And that was not something I wanted. I mentioned earlier why Dropship is in the company name. Well, Lifestyle is in the company name for a reason too. And that is because to me, Lifestyle is most important. 
I want to have free time. I want to be able to work on my schedule. I don't want hundreds of employees. In fact, even now at our scale, we're still under 15 people. And that is what I want. A business that can provide me with the income and time freedom that I am happy with. And that is why I know there's literally opportunity out there in thousands of other niches. And that is why I share this information here on my podcast, on YouTube, at dropshiplifestyle.com in our award-winning program, The Dropship Blueprint, only course to ever be voted best e-commerce course by Shopify. That is why I share it because I want more people to figure this stuff out. If you want the freedom, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying you're going to get rich overnight, but I'll tell you, this is a simple business model. It takes real work, but if you're willing to put in the real work, I truly believe there is nothing else out there like this. So guys, that's it for this episode. As always, if you got value, give it a like, click subscribe. And if you want a free training that goes in depth on how we do things like our competition tests, how we run ads, and a whole lot more, I'll post a link in the description to dropshipwebinar.com. If you go there, you can register for a free training. It's about two hours long with a Q&A at the end. And there, I also make a special offer on that award-winning program, The Dropship Blueprint. So check that out. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I'll talk to you in the next one. See everybody.